See, everyone on the Israel side of the field, they're watching Goliath the giant and the host of enemies, and, and they see that there's no way that David can win, and they're right. Because David sees something different. David sees God, and he sees how big God is, and he knows this much about God. Say it with me. God can use anybody to do anything. God can do anything. And we just read through the story so far, and we see how God's working. And we say, well, you know, it's a, it's a coincidence that David was singing songs and slinging rocks. Just a coincidence that Samson was put between the two pillars of the temple that he could push and collapse the whole t- temple. Just a coincidence that Joseph was put in prison in the same cell that the cupbearer of the Pharaoh was there. Just a coincidence that Ruth ended up in the field of Boaz, are all these coincidences, or God can use anyone to do anything? Maybe we most often put God in a box when it comes to God's timing, because we want God to fit into our calendar and to go by our timetable. So typically, we, when we see, say we believe in God, God, we know who you are, and we know that you can move and act, and this is how long you have to do it this way. By tomorrow, this afternoon, preferably. And David is anointed king. Fifteen years he waits to become king. And you're reading the story about ten of those years he is on the run, is being hunted like an escaped convict by King Saul, who knows that he is a threat to the throne. I mean, it's not just an easy wait, it's more than just watching sheep, it's running for your life, day in and day out, not knowing who you can trust. And he's the Lord's anointed. So here's David, on the run, hiding in caves, and yet we find him singing these psalms about the greatness of God, and then Psalm 24, 17 is a great verse to remember, Psalm 24, 14. Wait patiently for the Lord, be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. It is courageous to trust in God. It doesn't seem like a courageous thing to wait on God. If your God is in a box, it's pretty hard to wait on God. Because if God is in that box, it means then it's all up to me. That i got to figure out a way to fix this problem. i got to figure out a way to, to solve this. i got to figure out to be strong because God's in that box and it's all really up to me. And how many times do we feel that in our lives, that pressure? So, I want to add a third box breaker to the first two. God can use anybody to do anything, and the third box breaker is at any time. God can use anybody to do anything at any time. Can we say that together? God can use anybody to do anything at any time. So, my question for us today is, do we believe this? that God can use anybody, which might include me or my family or my kids or my parents, to do anything that's pretty wide open at any time now or 15 years from now. See, I think the struggle for us in the church today, Christians today, is that our God is too small. Our perception of our God as being small is a problem. Because what happens is we write this job description for God, and, and I know that I've written this job description. There's a good chance you might have. God, this is your job description. Make my life more comfortable and convenient. If you think your God tells you to take it easy and never take a risk, play it safe, then your God is too small. If God's job is to obey you, meaning... I need you to do this, and I need you to do it now. Then your God isn't in a box. Your God is in a bottle. Your God is a genie. I was thinking, Larry Hagman died this weekend, and so I'm thinking we can play both parts of Larry. We can be uh, Tony Nelson with I Dream a Genie, just, hey, God, you're like that, or we can be JR and just think that everyone has to do what we want, and we can play by our own rules. If your God operates on your timetable and you end up keeping God's calendar, 
then your God is too small. If your God is always saying, come, but never go, then your God is too small. If God never messes up your schedule and ruins your plans, if your God has never asked you to do something that isn't in the budget, if your God needs a certain president in office to accomplish God's purposes in this country, then your God is too small. If you think that God's dream for you is to retire and take it easy for many decades, then your God is too small. If you look around and see all your friends are just like you, they look just like you and act like you, if your God always agrees with you and, and thinks that your opinions and your preferences are the most reasonable, and that God always happens to like what you happen to like, if your God is a Methodist or a Baptist or a Catholic or non-denominational, then our God is too small. If our God is just fine spending an hour a week with us in church, then our God is too small. If our God said, you work long enough to make your marriage work, I just want you to be happy, then our God is too small. If God looks at our sin of greed and gossip and lust and selfishness and pride and says, hey, that's not too bad. You're better than most of the people I see around you. Then our God is too small. If our God has never filled our eyes with tears because of God's grace, if our God has never taken our breath away because of his power, then our God is too small. If our God says that our family is too messed up, that you're too young or too old, too broken, too poor, too guilty, too lost, then our God is too small. If your God fits nicely into a box, you have a problem. That's not God. You open it up and you discover God is not in there because God does not do boxes. But I believe, as we heard from the song, that we want the world to look at our heart and see that we have God's heart. I do think that in David, that's, all, that's something that moves within us. As you watch that song, I know you know, that, that indeed that I want to be able to my life to live away, and I believe that you want your life to be lived in a way that, that people not just see the heart of God in you. I think that's what we want. But what we have to work on is the belief that God can use anybody to do anything at any time. As we begin to believe that, we see that our heart looks at things differently, our heart acts differently, and the world is changed around us because we have a God who wants to use you as a somebody. And God wants to use to do not just anything, but something that is right for you, and he's working in your life right now. You may not know it yet. You may not have discovered it. And that time could be right now because you've known it and you've just resisted it, or it might be a further down the road. But that is my prayer and our prayer that God would use all of us to do God things, God's thing at God's time.